world. This is brought to you by Melissa Barkalow, Better View Travel, and myself, Judy Adams from World Travel Service. We're two leisure travel advisors, and we're putting together this podcast to bring you pieces of information related to travel. We're really excited today to have with us Mr. Ike High from Explore Charleston. Melissa, take it away. Great. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Ike, for joining us this morning. Um, we just wanted to ask you some questions about Charleston, as I know that is a popular destination for many people and myself, as I am here right now. Um, would you say this destination is for everybody? Uh, family friendly, multi-gen, honeymoon, foodies, adventure? Yeah, I think that we have a great array of things to do for for the whole family, whether it be young kids, you know, young adults who are here on honeymoon or just getting married or older generation. You know, we I think that our, our downtown historical district, coupled with our waterways and our beaches, really allow for a lot of different things to do for different age groups within the family. You know, for the younger generation, I think the family travel is very big right now. And I, I think you'll probably agree that the younger generation, um, people are always wondering, what am I going to do with my kids when I get there? Well, there's so much to do with our beaches and our waterways. And we have great museums and we have an aquarium. So there really is a lot to do in that arena. Um, but you also have great food, you have great culture, you have great history, which is also great for kids, but you know, appeals to a little bit more um, older generation than children. Like one of the things that Melissa and I have been talking about is obviously we know there's a pandemic going on right now. So it is still a time to talk about travel because travel is going to happen eventually. It may be different. Um, when we talk about travel post-pandemic, we're talking about people probably being more comfortable traveling domestically. And so that's why we're excited to talk about Charleston because it is a destination that does, to your point, attract a lot of people. So I just am putting them up here showing where Charleston is located for those people that don't know. It's on the south or on the coast of South Carolina. And um, can you tell us a little bit about the area around Charleston as well? Yeah, so what you're looking at right now is uh, really the topography of Charleston. And, you know, what a lot of people don't think of, when, when people think about Charleston, a lot of people think culture, history, ambiance, arts. Um, but one thing that we really tried to highlight over the last few years is our beautiful beaches and our beautiful waterways. So you really have kind of a, a two-pronged itinerary when you come to our area. You have this downtown historic district with this extremely walkable, has a very old European feel um it's about two square miles and then about 20 to 45 minutes away we have five beautiful beaches so it really is kind of two different itineraries two different vacations within the same trip um and there's so much to do again because we have so much diversity in our area so much to do for you know all age groups so i how many days would you recommend somebody come for their first visit or if they're coming back you know, that's that's a question that I get, you know, several times a day, and we want you to stay as long as you want to stay. <laughs> you know, Charles, obviously, Charleston, there's there's so much to do. I think it's easier to put a minimum number than mm -hmm. a maximum number. Um, I, you know, we, we think that three nights is a minimum number of nights um, to really get a good feel for what the Charleston, offer, Charleston area can offer. Um, you know, some some travel advisors I talk to say clients feel like, you know, Charleston is not a, a long a long stay destination, and and we we really disagree with that because because of the different areas of Charleston, the downtown area and the beaches, you can do that two pronged itinerary that I've talked about, and it really does feel like two different vacations. So you can really you know span it out. And the airport is it easy to get from the airport to downtown or to the beaches? Yeah, so we, our airport is about 15 minutes from the downtown historic district, about 20 minutes from Sullivan's, Sullivan's Island and Isle of Palms. And it was recently uh, had a total renovation about two, two and a half years ago. So it's a, it's a brand new airport, very vibrant when you get in there. The lights are bright. It just has a very good welcoming feeling when you get there. But it's also because Charleston is not, you know, the biggest destination. It's not a tier one destination like New York or Chicago or L.A., it's it's a smaller airport, so once your plane gets to the gate, 
you're 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 through the airport, get your bags, get your rental car, get to your Uber, what have you, very quickly. Great. Like one of the things I wanted to mention is I've been really fortunate enough to have visited Charleston twice as well as the Isle of Palm. When I go to Charleston, there's two things I'm focused on. One is getting that beautiful downtown marketplace, and the other is food. Um, I love shopping and I love food. That's a little cliche. But can you talk a little bit about the fine dining and cuisine that you find in Charleston? Yeah, so for, for the travelers that don't know, Charleston is really, really a big culinary destination and has been for, for many years now. It's actually the number two reason people visit Charleston right now, with history being the first. Um, in our area has amazing uh, white tablecloth fine dining restaurant. But in addition to that, we've had a huge influx in the last five, five or six years of really, really good laid back casual dining as well. You know, something that I like to call neighborhood restaurants. You know, everybody loves, you know, high end fine dining, white tablecloth, but it's hard to do that every night. And it's, you know, so you, you want, you want a nice, a nice array of different atmospheres. Um, whether it be quick and good or, or sit down and, and, and really fabulous food. And we also have a, a great selection of different kinds of cuisine. You know, we have great Asian fusion, we have Indian, we have low country cuisine, we have seafood, we have steaks. So you're not going to come to Charleston and get one type of restaurant with one type of cuisine. Uh, really offers you a lot, of, a lot of different options in the culinary world. Yeah. And then... Ike, would you say Charleston's a year-round destination? What are peak seasons? Definitely. You know, because we have so many different areas of Charleston, I think different areas peak at different times. Um, that the high seasons for our downtown historic district um, are traditionally the spring and the fall, April, May, you know, March, April, May, and then September, October, November. Um, but then, again, back to our beaches, that they really peak in the summertime. Um, you know, about middle May to middle September. Um, that's when people start gravitating to those beaches, family vacations, get to, you know, the ocean, the waterways. Um, but also the wintertime here in Charleston. Charleston has a very, very mild climate. Um, the average high in January is about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and the average low is around 45. Um, so you really have a very mild climate here in the wintertime, and that's why we get visitors here year-round. I think that's amazing because one of the things I think is going to happen, especially coming towards this next holiday season of 2020, is the people that typically want to go to have a city experience in New York, for example, at Christmas. I'm going to be trying to recommend my clients who took those tips last year to consider a place like Charleston that has a more temperate climate. So can you talk a little bit about what you do in the city for the holidays? Yeah, so Christmas is very important here in time in Charleston because we have such a mild climate. Um, it, it's, it's a very, it's a very big time. Uh, we do decorate the downtown historic district area with Chris, with, uh, Christmas decorations. So that's very popular. Um, James Allen County Park has a wonderful Christmas light show that you drive your car through. Um, my family and I go every year, several times. Um, most families I know go do that several times. It's a way to put the kids in the car, drive around. They can look. That's about 10 or 15 minutes from downtown. Um, there's amazing shopping experiences in the Christmas in the Christmas time, um, just like any other season. But you know, our, our downtown historic district, King Street, and the market area have absolutely amazing shopping, locally owned boutique shops that have some great, great items, great locally sourced things during the Christmas time. Um, so it really is a magical time in our area, uh, really highlighted by our temperate climate. I don't, isn't there also an annual home and garden tour or are there yeah, other so special annual events? Yeah, so our, we, we have uh, the, the Historical Society and the Preservation Society put on a home and garden tour. Um, one is in the springtime every year in April and the other is in the fall, usually in um, October, I believe. And it really is a great opportunity to look at the downtown historical district homes, the antebellum homes, the beautifully curated homes that are private homes that are not open regularly to people. It's a way for people to see these gardens, see these homes, get a look at the, the beautiful architecture that they normally would not be able to do um, on an organized tour basis. Our preservation society also um, does, does uh, customized tours for home and gardens. 
So if you ever have clients that are looking to come to Charleston, can't come in that window of, of the organized home and garden tour, or want something a little more customized, uh, a little more velvet rope experience, our preservation society can arrange um, a private experience for that. Great. Uh, any other information you think a potential visitor or hopefully a visitor should know about Charleston? Yeah, right now, I think that, you know, we're all in uncharted waters. Um, I think that Charleston is, is doing a great job of, of leading, leading the curve in, in recovery. A lot of things are open right now in Charleston. Hotels have, have started to open. Restaurants can uh, have outdoor seating. They can have 50% capacity in indoor seating. Um, tours and attractions should be opening soon. So we really are on a, a great path here. Um, the weather's great right now. Um, Melissa, hopefully you can attest to that. Yes, uh, yes. It, we, so, it was beautiful, sunny afternoon yesterday when we arrived. Great, great. So right now, um, you know, I just want to let everybody know that Charleston is a great place to visit. Um, it's not a very densely populated area, um, so you can social distance here. And because of uh, back to our waterways and our beaches, those are two great places to visit where you can really space out and, and experience social distancing while really enjoying um, some of the great attributes that Charleston has. Great. Yeah, well, I could test to that. I've been on the beaches a few times down there and you really, I mean, at least the times you really never feel like you're on top of other people, which is fabulous. A great experience for a beach. Yeah, well, we really are lucky to have great beaches that, that are easy to play on, easy to walk on, easy to sit. You know, they're not yeah. rocky. They're, they're, they're hard, compact sand with a lot of distance from when you walk to the beach to when the ocean starts. So it's a very versatile beach. And the Atlantic Ocean is, is warm right now. A lot of people in our area get in the water from about mid-May to mid-October. Perfect. I just have to say, I was very excited to sit at a table last night with silverware and people bringing me food. <laughs> yes, I can attest to how excited she was. She sent me some pictures. Look, it's food at a restaurant on a table. <laughs> well, we, we appreciate you coming and sitting at our tables and supporting our restaurants. Where did you eat? Uh, circa 1886. Yeah, Circa is a fabulous restaurant, a, a, a mainstay here in Charleston. Um, the owners of Wentworth Mansion and Circa are, are good friends of ours and great friends of our tourism industry. So, you know, it, it's definitely an, an accolade and, and a pleasure to have them uh, from a accommodation standpoint and a dining standpoint in our area. You've got some fabulous accommodations and lodging in Charleston. I mean, the Newberry, the... Belmont, the Wentworth. I mean, there's just a place for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Just like there's so many things to do for different age groups. I think there's yeah. a lot of different hotel properties for different clients. You know, we have the romantic properties. We have large properties. We have mid-sized properties. We have very unique properties. Um, we have properties with retail at the bottom. Um, so, you know, whatever, whatever clients you're looking for, whatever travel advisors are looking for, Charleston can offer it. Perfect. Melissa, any other questions? No, I want to thank Ike for his time and helping me uh, set up the wonderful trip I'm currently experiencing. I'm going to go out and visit a couple of the plantation mansions tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to that. You're going to have great. You're going to have well, a good. good time. If you need anything else while you're here, you know where to find me. Um, and if any, if, if any other travel advisors or your colleagues um, ever need anything, you know, that, that's exactly what I'm here for is to help you all learn and navigate Charleston and make sure that you provide the best experience for your clients. Thank you. I be careful what you offer there. Just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the screen right now, you'll see our contact information. If you are listening to this on Melissa, listening it through my site, listen, obviously reach out to me. Um, we would just like to thank you for listening today. Um, Ike, thank you so much. You just bring a wealth of information regarding Charleston and it just makes you want to like get up and go there right now. And listen, I can't believe I'm so jealous of you right now. You're, well, Judy, you're lucky. We welcome you anytime. And uh, thank you for allowing me to do this and, and highlighting Charleston and um, really put us in the, in, the, in the minds of travelers right now. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Bye -bye.